I want to take some more time today and talk about this idea of double portion. Everybody say double portion. Double portion is uh, a a look at the prophet Elisha, uh, whose spiritual mentor and spiritual father was Elijah. And uh, to really understand Elisha, uh, you got to get a grasp on the relationship that he had with Elijah. Uh, Elisha was the protege of this incredible prophet Elijah. He was, a, he was a spiritual son who served a spiritual father. And uh, most scholars believe it's probably about a 10-year window from the time that uh, Elijah threw his mantle on Elisha uh, while he was plowing in the fields until Elijah was taken up by the Lord um, and in a supernatural uh, disappearance, not a disappearance, but a, a taking away. Um, Elijah was a great man who, at the instruction of the Lord, threw a mantle onto Elisha, and uh, Elisha was plowing in a field, 12 yoke of oxen, so 24 oxen, so he was really a hard worker. He was from a well-to-do family, but he probably would have spent his whole life plowing fields until Elijah showed up, threw a mantle on him, and called him out of that into a higher life, into a greater life, a greater spiritual life. So uh, I started talking about this last week some, and uh, a couple of uh, thoughts, and then I want to move into a, a big idea for today. But Elijah and Elisha both had to learn how to let go of their past so they can move into their future. And uh, it, I know it's, it's great and it sounds easy when we stand and sing songs about the, a new thing has come and the old is gone, but uh, it's not always easy to let go of the old and to move into the new for your life. And uh, they, they couldn't just keep carrying their past along with them. Uh, they had to enter into the new way of life that God had called them into, both Elijah having a now a protege to take care of. And let me just tell you, um, it's like when, when we MC services, if I do it by myself, easy. If Suzette does it by herself, easy. If we have to do it together, not easy. Because <laughs> you, you have to depend on the other person. And uh, it changes things. Amen. Thank you for understanding that. You seem so receptive. Uh, Elijah saw potential in Elisha and gave him a new mantle. And I think that's part of our calling as believers. At some point, God wants to use us to see the potential that God's put in other people's lives and help call that potential out. When we're asking people to get involved, to pray, to serve, to, we're not just trying to fill a slot. We know that your true potential is going to be found when you start serving. And so uh, Elisha spent his, his whole life really walking out service uh, to Elijah so that he could develop his potential. If you want to, to find an opportunity, uh, if you want to develop your potential, your best bet is to learn to serve with the opportunity that's right in front of you now. I know a lot of us don't like possibly the idea of serving, but the truth is, if you learn to serve well, promotion is coming your way. So today, I want to talk about a concept that I see in Elisha's life that was absolutely amazing that I think is kind of countercultural for our world today and is so important for us. And I want to talk about the idea that Elisha had persevering pursuit. Persevering pursuit. Elisha persevered, or he was persistent, or he was just determined in his pursuit of this prophet, this great man of God, Elijah. He knew 
his future calling. He knew his, his destiny was found somehow wrapped up in Elisha's anointing. And Elijah, Elisha rather, wanted to take what he saw in Elijah's life and he wanted to take it further. He wanted to take the baton of what God had entrusted to Elijah and say, I'm going to carry this further. And what I want to say uh, to us today is to receive a double portion for the future, uh, which is a beautiful promise, and to be in a position to receive a double portion for the future. Elisha had to possess a persevering pursuit mentality. He had to have this thing in him that said, I'm not quitting, I'm not going to be deterred, but I'm not just going to be a stump on a log that perseveres. I'm going to pursue. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go after God. And I want to encourage in all of us today, because I know that there are people in this room that may have been tempted or may even be in, this, in the process of being tempted to quit, to, to quit on God, to quit on marriage, to quit on church, to, to quit on your own self. And, and I, I want the, there's something powerful about perseverance. There's something powerful about persistence. There's something powerful about pursuit, about, about, about uh, going for it. There's something powerful about staying connected where God connects you. So it is, it is the concept of perseverance and pursuit. It's both ideas that were alive in Elisha. And I'm here to encourage today, don't give up on God. Amen. Don't, and don't, just because you're maybe you're not in the greatest season right now, there's a better season ahead. And I, and, and I want to encourage you to pursue God. Even if things feel dry for you at the moment, it won't be dry forever. There will be a greater chapter. I want to I wanna encourage you guys that are married to st- persevere in your marriage. I said, I want to encourage you guys that are married to pers- it, it This day, this, that, this culture that we live in, people can bail on marriage for the silliest reasons. But I'm telling you, If you're going through a tough season in your marriage, I would venture to say God is actually working on you and using your spouse, that's right, uh, to help you grow. Come on. I want to, and I have, you know, Suzette and I have led this church for almost 35 years. I have seen tens of thousands of people give their life to Christ, and I've seen tens of thousands of people leave their church, our church, for the silliest, stupidest reasons imaginable. The place that God put them so that they could be a part of a great mission on the planet and so many have bailed. Now, am I saying that no one should ever change church? I'm not saying that. But I am, I am saying that it's better to learn where you're planted and stay planted than to move from church to church to church to church to go from, so you don't, so you don't like one thing the pastor said or whoever said, uh, but so what? Get over it. Amen. No, honestly, I think the thing 
that is so alive today. It's like you can, there's a church right down the street. It's a great church. There's, there's podcasts you could watch galore, which would help make you have no responsibility in your spiritual life. Hello. Thank you, second service. I feel an anointing. Uh, and, and I want to say there's just something that is so powerful about learning to stick with your God-ordained relationships. <laughs> to, to, to learn to stay with it, stay with God, stay with your church, stay with your spouse, stay with your walk with God, stay with it through the ups, through the downs, through the, no matter what the opinion of other people is, don't, that, don't let them tell you what to do. Pursue always. Live in pursuit. I believe that, that every person who succeeds in life has this characteristic. They have this persevering pursuit. They are committed to growing. They are committed to getting better. They are committed to reaching higher. They are committed to going higher. They're committed to sticking with it. They can't be moved so easily. Let's let, we, were, we were flipping through channels, and um, this shows how old Suzette and I are. We stopped at PBS. But they were talking about when people get older, which I'm glad to hear about that, so when I get there, but when people get older, that a lot of people just quit learning, quit developing, quit growing as a person, and their brain starts to freeze up, and their, their muscles start to freeze up. And they were talking about the power of a commitment to growing. Hey, listen, you want your circumstances to get better. When you get better, your life gets better. So I'm encouraging us today to stay on the upward path, to stay on the journey of persevering pursuit. Don't, it's not about arrival, because no one arrives. You, you, you live in the pursuit of, because if you have an arrival mentality, it's like, when I get there, then I'll be satisfied. Well, a couple of things are gonna happen. One, if you never get there, you're constantly discouraged with your life. And that's no way to live. It's far better to live in pursuit and, and know that that's the journey, that's the deal, than think if I get this, if I get to that. But the other part is, if you actually arrive there and now you just get stuck, you're in a rut. You think you've arrived. Pursuit is a healthy attitude. Persevering pursuit is a healthy attitude. I haven't arrived yet, but I know where I'm headed. I know what direction I'm going in. You know, the Bible calls us to, to righteousness and to, to uh, godliness, to faith, to love, to perseverance, to, to gentleness. And what I've discovered is that every new situation I walk into, every new season that I, I walk into, I've got to be in pursuit. Once again, what's, what's righteousness in this situation? What's the right thing to do? What's the right thing to say? What's the right thing not to say in this situation? I'm, I'm in pursuit of God. God, what are you doing in the middle of this? What are you saying to me? What are you up to? Because he is always up to something, right? I'm in pursuit of where is God in this? Come on, when I'm facing situations, new situations, I'm in pursuit of faith for this set of circumstances. The faith that got me through the past, thank you, Lord, for it, but I need a fresh eye of faith and a fresh heart of faith, just a fresh way of looking at it. Faith for the last time won't cut it this time. Come on, I mean, please don't get stale and dry and crusty. Amen. 
Come on. Hey, I'm in, I'm in pursuit of what? What's love in this situation, right? What, what would love look like in this set of circumstances? What would love say? What would love do? Sometimes love says, shut up, we don't need your opinion. Turn look at your neighbor. Say, he's talking about you now. But sometimes love will cause you to bring a loving clarity to somebody who needs, somebody who actually cares about them, to talk to them about, that is stupid. Don't do that anymore. We don't have to say it like that, but... I'm in, I'm in pursuit of persevering. Hey, listen, there's more than one Monday I wanted to quit. But obviously, I haven't done it yet. And, you know, just because you have a quitting thought doesn't mean you're out of the game. Everybody's had a quitting thought. But that doesn't, that doesn't throw you out. I'm in, I'm in pursuit of handling things with gentleness, but I know not everything I do is, is gentle, but gentleness is where I'm headed. So I'm in pursuit of a prayer life. I don't, I've, I don't feel like I've arrived with a prayer life. I'm in pursuit of the word of the Lord. I'm in pursuit of beauty and excellence for the glory of God. I'm just saying... If you, want, if you want to succeed in your walk with God, in your life, in your marriage, in your work, in who you are, you got to possess this persevering pursuit mentality. The difference between excellence and mediocrity is persevering pursuit, right? Because mediocrity, mediocrity just settles for what it gets. But excellence says, I think I can go higher. I think I can keep pressing on for better. So let's look, about, let's look at this little conversation. 2 Kings 2.9 came about, and this is towards the end of Elijah's time on the earth and Elisha, and he knows this, that Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I'll do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, please let a double portion, everybody say a double portion, a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Now, Elisha is asking for a double portion because he knows that is the right of a firstborn son. He's not just looking for what he can get off of Elijah, he's looking to move into a relationship with Elijah. Deuteronomy 21, 17 says, he shall acknowledge the firstborn, the son of the unloved, by giving him a double portion of all that he has, for he is the beginning of his strength. To him belongs the right of the firstborn. Let me just say that Elijah was asking for something that had to do with a relationship. Relationships matter. You're never going to fulfill the fullness of your purpose without the right relationships in your life. Hang in there with me. I know I say this all the time, but I'm going to say this today. You're, you, some relationships matter more than others. Not everybody that's good to you is good for you. And there are people that you have a relationship with that could actually help you move forward in life. And then there are other people that you have a relationship with that are not helping you move forward in life. And... I'm encouraging you to learn how to persevere 
not just in relationships that you think are fun, and hopefully they are, can be fun, but I'm here to encourage all of us to make sure we hang on to the right kind of relationships in our life. <laughs> Elisha's got a beautiful heart here because he's looking for an inheritance that's birthed out of a relationship, the relationship of firstborn son. See, it's, it's one thing to know about how good God is and how much God loves to bless. But it's another thing to know the God who blesses, right? It, it's, it's one thing to attend a church on occasion, but it's a whole other thing to join the family, to join the mission, to join the cause, to join the calling. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. There's something about relationship. You can't just bop around. You gotta, you gotta find out the relationship that God's put you in. It, it's one thing to enjoy the pastor's message, but it's another thing to catch his spirit. So the Bible has many, this idea of, of going for a double portion in the future, the Bible talks about this quite often. Isaiah 61, 7, this is a verse uh, that actually carried me through a very difficult season in the life of our church around 20 years ago. And how many of you have ever gone through a really tough season and you wake up at 2.30 and you got crazy thoughts going on? And it, come on, yeah, I know you got crazy thoughts going on right now, much less, but 2.30 in the morning, you can have some crazy thoughts going on. And that's when we need to get a word from God that can be a sword in our mouth so that the crazy thoughts don't win, but God's word wins because it's in our mouth. So Isaiah 61, 7 says, instead of your shame, ever felt ashamed? You don't have to say anything. Instead of your shame, you're going to have a double portion. Instead of humiliation, they'll shout for joy over your portion. Therefore, they will possess a double portion in their land. Everlasting joy will be theirs. Come on, that's God's promise. 1 Timothy 5.17 says, the, the elders who rule well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. Somebody could have said amen at that verse because it's a good one. I like it. Zechariah 9, 12. Return to the stronghold, O prisoners who have the hope. Anybody got a little bit of hope alive? This very day I'm declaring that I will restore double to you. Come on, God loves to restore. We all know the story of Job, right? But here's the end of the story, Job 42.10. The Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends, and the Lord increased all that Job had twofold, double. Now, I, I, I'm not saying everything is, it's going to be twice the number, although Elisha had twice the number of miracles and Job experienced twice the number of everything else that he had before he entered his trial. But all I want to say is whatever double is, double from today is a better day. It's a better season. It's a better future. I find it interesting that Elisha asked for a double portion of his spirit. Uh, that he wanted more than just, what are your thoughts? What are your ideas? How do you organize? You know, he, he's looking for the impartation of some kind of spiritual genetic code, like a, a vision, a burden, a, a, an anointing. And you know, we're going to read this in a minute, but there were other sons of the prophets 
the Bible calls them the guild of prophets. And they were, you know, 50 prophets, and they were just kind of hanging around with an observer's mentality. They were prophets. They would have had an opportunity to get Elijah's spirit, but they just decided, I'm just going to watch from a dif- distance. I'm, I'm just going to watch the show. I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to see what takes place. Elisha was in pursuit of what really made Elijah tick. He, he wanted his, to catch his spirit. I remember one prayer time a few, couple of years back, I'm plowing in my head through ideas about how to resolve an issue, standing right over there, walking around praying. I'm right in that spot over there. And there's an anointing right on that spot. You gotta go. Uh, but all I know is that I'm trying to figure out what to do. And the Holy Spirit said to me, I am building this church not through your head, but through your spirit. And I just want to say to you that whatever you're facing, what's going on in your spirit is way more important than what's going on in your head. Your, your spirit knows more than your head has caught up with yet. So Elisha knew, I, I got to be, you know, I, I, gotta, I want to come in as a son. I want to come in relationship. I want your spirit. So let me go back to these verses, these couple of verses. 2 Kings 2, 9 again. They crossed over. Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for you before I'm taken from you. Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Elijah said, you've asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, when you, when you see me, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so for you. And this phrase in the Hebrew, if you see me when I'm taken away, if you see me when I go, it literally means if you see me eye to eye. Like if you see the vision I see, the anointing that's on me is for that vision. Everybody hear what I just said? Elijah's anointing is for Elijah's calling. Can Elisha see the same vision? Because the anointing to be a prophet is not going to do any good on somebody who doesn't want to be a prophet. Hello? Can, can, there has to be a common vision, a, 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 sh- a relationship. And I say this, when I look at Elijah and Elisha, I think of passing my spirit down, passing my values down, passing an anointing down. And I'm asking you to think the same way because if we haven't passed our vision and our values and our spirit down to the next generation, they might do things a whole lot different than you or I have done them. But the inheritance that we leave for them is we got to give them our spirit, our vision. They may carry it out different, but they got to get it, right? Remember the prodigal son in the book of Luke? Dad, give me all the stuff of my inheritance. And he took it off and he spent it on crazy stuff. And then he had no, he didn't want to take his inheritance to build the father's house. He just took his inheritance to spend it the way he wanted to. And I believe that it's so important for us to be passing down our spirit, our vision, our values, even the anointing that's on our life to the next generation. You know, I'm going to read these verses in just a minute, but the, the sons of the prophets, are, they're, they're the company of prophets are all kind of, trolling Elisha. And they're just, they're saying, hey, guess what? Elijah's going to be taken away. And it seems that there is every good reason for Elisha to go, 
huh, I'm done. But there's one reason that he needs to hang in there. And that is God put them together. And I know not everybody has ears to hear this, but I'm saying it. You have to know where your joinings are and be faithful to where God has put you, what God has joined together. So 2 Kings 2.1, just this side of the message, just before God took Elijah to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on a walk out of Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. God is sending me on an errand to Bethel. Elisha said, not on your life. I am not letting you out of my sight. So they both went to Bethel. The guild of prophets, the company of prophets at Bethel met Elijah and had to offer their opinion. Did you know that God is going to take your master away from you today? Yes, Elisha said, I know, but shut up. Oh, I mean, keep it quiet. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. God's sending me on an errand to Jericho. Elisha said, not on your life. I'm not letting you out of my sight. So they both went to Jericho. Then there was a company of prophets at Jericho who came to Elisha and said, did you not know that God is going to take your master away from you today? He said, I know it. Keep quiet. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. Third time, God sent me on an errand to the Jordan. Elisha said, not on your life. I'm not letting you get out of my sight. So the two of them went their way together. Meanwhile, 50 men from the Guild of Prophets gathered some distance away. So you got Elisha, seemingly Elijah being like, dude, leave me alone. And Elisha saying, I am not letting you out of my sight. But there's a 50 prophets that are just some distance away waiting to see how this is all going to roll out. I'm talking about having a persevering pursuit of the relationships that God gives you. Every relationship in your life will be tested. It's, it's the endurance through the ups and the downs. It's the endurance through the successes and the failures. It's the endurance, the perseverance through the high times and the low times. And here, here's the other thing I am so respect about Elisha is that he stuck with his Elijah till the end. He didn't care what the... Everybody else was saying, he didn't care about if he got his feelings a little bit hurt. He just stuck in there. You know, some people want to hang around with you when things are going well for you. Because then it seems like things are going well for them. But you find out who your real friends are when they hang around with you when things aren't going well for you. And you know that they love you and not just what they can get out of being around you. Amen. And I, I think what I wanna leave us today, and I wanna pray, because I really believe the Holy Spirit wants to touch someone today. But to have a double portion future, which is a beautiful promise, it, it costs something. You got to leave your past behind. You, you got to keep dressing for the new season. Put the prophet's mantle on, if you will. You got to stick with the relationships that are God ordained in your life. You got to have that persevering pursuit. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes for just a moment. And I just felt I didn't do this in first service, but I really feel it in this service. I know some of us are on the verge of quit. Maybe your marriage, 
and maybe your calling and maybe your relationship with God it may be your place in this house. It, it, it may be you on yourself. That you just are, are struggling with where things are right now. And I, I'm, I want to pray. If you're here, nobody looking around for just a moment. But if you say, I've I'm, I'm really had this temptation to quit. And, and I, I, I need a fresh breath of the Holy Spirit. I need this persevering pursuit spirit in me if that's you and you say pastor would you pray for me i just want you to raise your hand up real high right now wherever wherever you are right now come on god bless you all over the room it's just an honest moment before god i don't know what you feel like you want to quit on i don't even know if you feel like you want to quit on yourself but i just want to pray for you right now just keep your hand up just for a moment father i'm coming in the name of jesus Lord, thank you for this incredible example of Elisha. And we're praying, God, every person that is facing a temptation to quit today, and whatever it is, Lord, I pray that they will receive from you a fresh boost of endurance, of persistence, of perseverance, God, in their life, and that you're carrying them in to their next chapter, the next chapter that'll be double. You can put your hands down now. Hey, I want to do this real quickly and then I'll be done. Maybe you're here today. You've never really actually surrendered your life to Jesus. I, I want to pray with you. Maybe you're here today and you look back and you go, there was a time that I used to be a whole lot closer to God than I am right now. And I know it's time for me to come back home. Or maybe you just don't feel confident about where you stand with God. This is about your relationship with God. If it's not where you want it to be and you want to open your heart to God, you say, Pastor, would you pray with me? Would you raise your hand right now? That's just all over the room. Come on, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to come back to Jesus. God bless you. All over the room, thank you. God bless you. Come on, anybody else that just wants to open your heart to Jesus. So open your heart to the love of the Father. You want to come back. You want to know for sure. Thank you. You can put your hands down now. Hey, for everybody who raised their hand, but could we all pray with them? Let's all pray this together. Everybody say, Lord Jesus, I open my heart. I open my life to your love, to your Lordship. I need you. I want you in my life as my Lord. I know I've sinned, I know I've messed up, but I'm coming to the cross where you've paid the price of forgiveness, giving me a fresh start and a new beginning. Help me become the person you created me to be. Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord. Amen.